Okay, this is the story of the uh, Marquette and Bessemer that sank in uh, December 7th, 1909. I'd like to thank uh, Frank and Nancy Prothrow for believing in my story. And uh, I'd like to thank Sean Berry for the info on uh, lifeboat number four, which ended up telling me most of the story. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, with the, the ship itself, the Marquette and Bessemer, carrying 30 uh, rail cars, 350 foot long, 54 foot beam. She built about 50 foot of steel once she laid over. Uh, and the captain can't go head to or stern, have a stern facing this rough sea. 75 mile an hour wind, by the time he gets to Fort Stanley, it's zero. By the time he's done, it's minus five. So we'll start the journey uh, at Conneaut, where he left at uh, 1030, or 1043. So he leaves Conneaut, and he gets to Fort Stanley, and he can't get in the harbor. It's too rough, 75 mile an hour wind come from the west. And his only shot, is Cleveland. I I know this for a fact now because I know where she is. So the last credible witness is Mr. Wheeler, the customs officer in Port Stanley, who sees it going west towards Rondo. Last credible witness. Okay, so he uh, starts his journey in the lee, staying out of the wind. As close as he can down the shore, but he's got a problem. He's icing up. He's icing up on the starboard aft. And I know this because our cook tells us. The, uh, George Smith, the steward, with two knives and a butcher cleaver. Two butcher knives and a meat cleaver. He grabs them when he gets the order from the captain that it, they need the crew to break ice. That's why the knives are in lifeboat four. So he grabs his knives, he runs up, he puts them in lifeboat four, and he goes up with the rest of the crew that's in lifeboat four and starts breaking ice as they're staying in the lee of the land because their target is Cleveland. It's a sound captain in an unstable boat. So he's fighting ice all the way down. And uh, when he gets to have to do his curve to go to Cleveland. That's when he loses it. He starts turning and the, the ice is built up on the starboard side that they're trying to pound off for probably two, three hours down here. And it starts to list when he's making his turn. And those guys in lifeboat four knew that she wasn't coming back to true. So they get in lifeboat four and they launch and she finishes going over and turtling and they launch and get away and get into the currents and end up over in Erie, Pennsylvania. That's where they're found. So it, uh, it goes over, it smashes the, the lifeboats on the other side off. It's in the lee of the land here. The one lifeboat sank and the other one was kind of smashed. So I think the one that was smashed was on the front and it was closer to land than the one at the back. So they get smashed off and they stay in the current and they go all the way down to Port Burwell where they finally land. Okay, the, uh, this trip is backed up by the captain's brother's watch, which they found at Niagara Falls when they found his body at uh, his watch. It was a silver watch and it was stopped at 1225. Well, these, from what I've found out, these watches can run for an hour underwater. So, I believe that covers our trip here to Rondeau. She was going for Cleveland 
over here and she faltered doing her curve and she faltered and became Rondo Park okay now I've known this for like a month and a half and I the only people other people knew were Frank and Nancy and my family so I thought I would spitball and see if I could see it by the way the point was built because I know it's there I've known it for in my heart for a month and a half now so I got on the Google Maps here and I started looking at the point and I noticed before I even zoomed right in that the point is indeed pointed in the last direction he didn't quite get her on course with Cleveland but he got her close before she went over and it formed this point this point is made from the Marquette and Bessemer these men are buried under this point and I'm going to show you right now exactly where and she's bleeding her her cargo so this is the uh, curve spot she come down here she this is a uh, 1909 so this is different she landed in here on her side she flipped over her side and gained all the sediment is on her back this is her okay so when I've zoomed in here to see if I could find some evidence of her and her how she built the point it happened to be a really clear day on Google Maps when they took the pictures and she she is leaking she she told me right where she is she's leaking and she's between Lakeshore Road and Black Oak or uh, where the Black Oak Trail is uh, Bennett Road Bennett Road and Lakeshore down Lakeshore Road to Rondo Avenue from there to those two points and I know this because she's leaking and you can see it in in the Google Maps if you go there when I'm done with this video and you look you will see she is leaking her coal cargo off of that shore and it is from there to there she's in there somewhere if you go back and I checked the whole the whole point after here there's nothing not a lot of black big things of sediment coming up except for what's leaking off of her she is part of the point and she's really leaking bad in a few spots so that is where all my data took me and it's five months of work to get here so that's your that's the Marquette and Bessemer that is where she is um, I'd like to put a, a shout out to Mike Fletcher and uh, the late Clive Cussler I got off the couch